There's AEW fan outrage following a disgusting Max Caster tweet. Plus, the backstage WWE reaction to Will Ospreay's debut has been revealed, and a new WrestleMania 40 match has been pitched. It's all in the Cultaholic Wrestling News right now. Max Caster has had an unusual week. So, uh, he's been tweeting a lot, seemingly in intimating a very aggressive heel turn it seems that way uh, but there was a tweet that he posted last night that has caught quite a lot of flag yeah as mercedes Monet, who of course made her aew debut last night uh, tweeted out boston with the dollar signs uh, clearly indicating that she was going to be a part of last night's um, dynamite big business uh, max caster made the curious decision to share a photo of himself shaking hands with Sammy Guevara uh, with the caption, just talk to Sammy Guevara. He's a great guy. Um, obviously, Sammy Guevara got into a lot of trouble uh, a few years ago uh, when distasteful comments about Mercedes Monet were brought up. He had appeared on a podcast um, and uh, made a few jokes. They had since made amends over this. Yeah. Um, but really weird thing to do. And I don't understand what Max Caster is doing. I don't know if this is him him trying to go oh, right we need to be healed so i'm just going to act like a bell end online mm. and then you know force tony khan's hand or if he's trying to get fired it's a really it, it's this isn't heel work this is just him being a knob isn't it it does it, <laughs> and that's the thing it does feel like that's what's happening and i know a lot of people uh online have been pretty shocked by some of the things he's been saying. There's been quite a few comments that he's made that, have, that don't ring true with just somebody being a heel, you know, or somebody just being a troll for a wrestling show. They come across as uh, a, a little bit darker in tone than expected. Of course, you know, we both lived through the Attitude Era, so we know that there has been edgy content in wrestling in the past before uh, that is brought up. That is true, but this isn't that time anymore. This is a very different time period is 2024, and it just doesn't reflect what's happening on on screen and that's the confusion yeah because even after last night they're still baby faces they tried to make the save big beat down they're not being presented as heels on television which yeah it made me think oh maybe they're working toward that maybe they're going to leave tony khan with no choice uh, i can imagine that they're very frustrated as a team because I think they were so over. They were so those bloody foam finger things yeah. were everywhere. People were so unbelievably hot for them. The trios titles, they've done them no favors at all and now they're just sort of about. So I can understand wanting to refresh a character, but I guess there's there's a line that you don't cross and it's a very odd thing to do and to seemingly be sort of poking fun at because it was such a sensitive matter. And I, I don't think this is me being a, a snowflake or mm. us being snowflakes about it. I think it's just what sort of AEW's corporate values dictate as well. Yeah. Like you, you, you can't be doing stuff like that. So it'll be interesting to see where this goes. Honestly, I think he might be trying to get the sack. I, it I, does I, feel I, that really, might be it. I, I'm not sure this is a heel turn. I think he's probably very frustrated with his position in AEW and he's trying to get the sack. Uh, maybe he's had a discreet little phone call from some other company because um, they were they were so hot and it must be really, frustrating really for him were. but uh, it, it's, it's a weird one it's a weird one fans massively kicking off about it um, his his name trending last night um, and when really all eyes should have been on Mercedes debut which was fantastic by the way yeah. I they dealt with it so very well uh, I don't know why you would do this. Yeah, it was. Yeah, so last night was about Mercedes Monet's debut. We also saw a bit of Will Ospreay in there as well. I think the Bruv chants are, are, are a true indicator of, of just how over like Rover he currently is. Man, he is. And He's what so a good. promo last night. He was absolutely on fire. I think with Will Ospreay, the thing that comes across so clearly is his proper passion for wrestling. Mm. Um, and he communicated that really, really well in his promo with Tony Schiavone last night. That was fantastic stuff. But yeah, you really feel feel it and like he's a guy who a lot of people wrote off early he's a flippy guy right he can't do the yeah. character work i think he's proven everybody wrong over the for the past few years he's been absolutely sensational there uh but yeah what comes across it feels so sincere everything that osprey says it's like he's he, he displays his passion for wrestling and he's backed that up with what he's done he's he, he's worked shows which uh no disrespect to the promotions or anything but a little bit below him he was still doing little indie shows in like new zealand he was out in new mm. zealand i think maybe australia as well he's in the uk doing shows when he was like a big big name <laughs> 
and that's kind of it. him giving back to yeah. though that circuit that served him so well and now he's on this bigger stage and and not only were, you know did AEW make him an offer which he accepted but we know there was conversations with him and WWE as well this is really interesting the wrestling observer has revealed that according to their sources Paul Triple H Levesque didn't realize how good Will Ospreay was until they saw him in AEW the general belief was according to sources close to the observer is that Will Ospreay was an excellent wrestler but they were truly unaware in particular Triple H of how good he was with getting live crowds behind him how good he's been lately at character work uh, and it led to him being offered less money by WWE than AEW and consequently he followed the money to AEW fair play can't complain with that I imagine there's a lot of dream matches for Will Ospreay in either company but I think he's made a really sensible choice this uh, feels like the right home for it him it does I was looking at the AEW roster page this morning it's one of the most stacked rosters that I've ever seen in wrestling it really does feel like AEW is on the up again at the moment it's been a mm -hmm. bit of a weird year and a bit maybe for AEW um, but it feels like they're properly back on track I was proper excited yesterday watching that show I thought it was I thought it was excellent um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do in 2024 new visual style as well they've got the new ramp and all that stuff new logos uh, it feels like this is a renewed AEW and I'm buzzing about it and it feels like they, uh, they've got big things ahead including the biggest forbidden door show ever in 2024 there's the door ill don't go in <laughs> no it's forbidden uh, Arthur Ashe Stadium in New York City will host forbidden door <laughs> this year that? <laughs> that, that wasn't it's about Barry, isn't it? <laughs> New York City. <laughs> Sounded like an old man. <laughs> New York City. New York City. Uh, not only will New Japan and AEW and maybe Matt Berry be involved in, for that's a true forbidden door, that is. Mm -hmm. uh, Clint Fandango be warned. But also CMLL and Stardom yes. are going to be in the mix as well. We've seen some CMLL names on the shows lately, haven't we? We certainly have. They've been working together since 2023. We've seen loads and loads of their top guys come over um, and it's a nice addition isn't it it's a really nice addition to Forbidden Door a lot of those are just for hardcore wrestling fans proper dream matches just mm. stuff that you, you're not going to see elsewhere it gives the wrestlers the opportunity to work with people that they probably wanted to work with for an awful long time people whose work they admire on both sides of things um, and it'll be a really fun show and we'll, see, we'll see stardom talent as well involved at Supercard of Honor in April for Ring of Honor. Uh, and there was some, some uh, stardom talent on show uh, during the tapings yesterday. But you know what? Mm. I won't spoil that for you. You can go find that for yourself, you little tear away, you. Uh, let's move to WrestleMania. Just a couple of weeks away. It very much feels like mania season, doesn't it? It does. It really it does. does. I, I'm, I'm so hyped. I think wrestling right now is just great. But hey, yeah, it's WrestleMania season. Uh, the card is shaping up to be looking very, very strong. Spread over two nights, which I love. I'm so glad they're sticking mm. with that. Uh, one match that might be happening, might not. The big lads are pitching for it. Mm. Tom, what's the deal here? Well, WrestleMania's card is big. Could it be meatier? So, seemingly inspired by uh, the, the meat madness proposition that we didn't quite get from Tony Khan and AEW. Uh, and WWE's big boys are pitching for a piece of Mania action. So this all started with Bronson Reed, who said, there are some big brothers currently not in this year's WrestleMania. I think it's time for Big E's Meaty Invitational. Because lest we forget, the meat whole, the whole meat thing, whilst it was highlighted by AEW recently, does trail back to Big E. Yes. And that podcast he did where he wanted to face Goldberg and be big meaty men, men slapping meat. meat. Uh, big meaty invitational with Big E as the, as the poster boy for it. Bronson says, if you, the WWE Universe, want it, let your voice be heard. Hashtag meat mania. We have some meaty competition already, don't we? We do. O Otis weighing in <laughs> saying, yeah, as a matter of fact, Oh, yeah. I got some unfinished business with you, Big Daddy Claw. And then Ivar of the Viking Raiders, another big, big, meaty man. I want to see WrestleMania XL go extra large. <laughs> Hash, uh, at Big E, Meaty Invitational, sign me up. Hashtag Meat Mania. Get it trending. Don't, don't let him shut up. Mm. You know what? This is, first of all, something that would be really, really handy to have on the WrestleMania card mm. because it gets a load of people who might not be doing something at WrestleMania on the WrestleMania card in a match type that we don't see that often. A multi man meaty madness you know what mm. um and 
the opportunity is there to get Biggie on commentary going mental. Yes, please. Mm. So good. At Triple H, <laughs> book meat mania, <laughs> you scrumptious coward. <laughs> I'm desperate to see it. I'm desperate because we're missing something with WrestleMania. Obviously, meat. like Money in the Bank, all, all, all those years ago, was part of the WrestleMania card. Now that has its own pay per view. Uh, and you've got the, the, the arm bar and the women's battle royal. Nobody gives a toss, right? <laughs> No, what have they done? It's what, true. What, what, what has any winner ever done with that trophy? It, it d- doesn't mean anything. They do that. So, right, move on from that. Just give us meaty men all the time. But the- who will win the armbar <laughs> if all the meaty men are in the meat match? It's done so many people so well to win that one. So, just <laughs> I, I, no disrespect to Andre the Giant, a meaty man in his own right. You slagging off Andre the Giant? I am mate. not slagging off Andre he the Giant. Have you. Get him in. Augmented reality, Andre the Giant, him hugging Biggie. It's, it's all done. Get him on yeah, comms. I, <laughs> Somehow. They scan, aye, aye. they scan it to the sky and it's like Andre's uh, ghost is nodding over the top yes. like at the end of Star Wars. Like, yes. I, I like this more than my own armbar. A big Andre, augmented reality, <laughs> or, or reality, reality, <laughs> literally passes a torch down from the rafters <laughs> to the winner of the big meaty madness whatever match. How perfect is this? Talk about pre-manifestation, which is, oh, stop it. Um, this weekend, uh, oh. myself and Gary YouTube, we have a tier list going out. We certainly do. Celebrating meat planets of the wrestling world, past, present, and future. We are going to be tiering the meat planet. And oh my days, do we have a phenomenal special guest, which you'll find out about on Sunday. A phenomenal special it's guest. Uh, so he is big, it's big, to be a part of the tier list. Find out on Sunday, myself and Ross at Gary YouTube. Before we go, I want a stat from somebody watching this video right now. When that video goes live on Sunday, I want to know the combined build weight for every meaty man in there. I want a complete total in the comments. If you'll do that for me, I'm I'm just being lazy here. I can do it myself. But tally them all up and let's see. We're getting into the tons. Obviously, mm, we're getting into the tons. A lot of tonnage. <laughs> a lot of beef. And we'll have more wrestling news, of course, oh, yeah. throughout the beef at cultaholic.beef. Stay safe. Love you. Bye. <laughs>